Hello, and welcome back to my editing nightmare. Basically, since my one year hiatus from this this hardcore world, I uh, just recorded a bunch of footage, like two and a half terabytes worth of footage, and now I have to edit it all down. So I made the executive decision that I don't care how long this one is, I'm gonna get through it all. I want to play Minecraft again. So in today's episode, I do some flawless redstone, finish the starter base and the inn, start terraforming, and burn down the inn. I don't know what I was doing. All on this episode of Hardcore. And we're kicking things right off, right where I left off last time. If you missed last episode, I built a villager breeder and a inn building to go around it. And today, first off, we we're going to make that interior to that inn building. I, I for one, hate interiors so much. Uh, it takes a lot of different resources to build it, and um, I, I just suck at them. So this was going to be a challenge for me. So as all my projects go, we needed to gather some resources. I had a good majority of all the resources I needed, just needed to craft some stuff, but I was going to need to refill on most of the wood types. Like I was saying earlier, making interiors causes you to get a lot of odd materials? Items? I don't know. One of those weird items was getting a bunch of candles. Now, I set up a little bit of a bee setup, but it's not working very well. It's hard to farm, and the bees kept escaping. And in order to complete the village inn building, I was gonna need a lot of candles. I also had a couple beehives set up by the villager breeder to kinda make the potatoes grow a bit faster, which would make it breed faster. So throughout all the resource gathering and building and stuff, I gradually get more and more honeycomb to get candles. Some more tree chopping later, I had just about all the wood I was going to need, but I needed to go get some more jungle wood. The jungle was like maybe a thousand blocks away from spawn, nothing too bad, but I didn't want to walk that far, that would take too long. So I came up with an idea. I think it's time to get a horse. I have to do some travels to get some more jungle and some cocoa. Hello, sir. Ooh. That's pretty quick. It's not as fast. And just like that, I got a new horse companion. We ride! Diamond horse armor looks stupid. Yippee! Aw, oh, that looks nice. That looks good. Okay. Wow. That is, that is fun. That is nice. That is cute. And off to the jungle we went. Now, it was time to get all the oddball resources we were going to need. Yo. Basically, it was a lot of collect three of these, craft eight of these kind of stuff. Really annoying, if you ask me.
And just like that, we had everything we needed. So let's build an interior. Weird. We don't do that very often. So, right as you walk in, uh, I wanted to have a little sit-down area just to hang out or whatever. Something I thought was kind of cool was how I did the walls. I did it with mushroom, brown mushroom block, and stripped jungle, which looks a little weird, but I think it's kind of cool. And just like that, we got the first room finished, and I think it looks fine. <laughs> the next part of the inn we're going to build is the front desk area. This is where people would um, check in to get a room or whatever, but it's also very important because it leads to the outside garden gazebo thing. And just like that, I know the room done. I like the uh, front desk. I think it looks quite nice. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have this like awkward hallway section that would lead to the dining area and also to the rooms. This is probably like one of my favorite parts of the interior. It's just so fun. This next room is fairly straightforward as well, uh, but there's a stairway that goes up and a stairway that goes down. Uh, the stairway up leads to all the rest of the rooms and the stairway down leads to... Anyway, let's move on. Moving on to the upstairs, this is where all the rooms are gonna be. I kind of found it difficult to create a good layout that would both have a lot of rooms and also just work. So what I ended up coming up with was on one side of the wall there's a bunch of smaller rooms that are like less expensive in this world or whatever. And then down the hallway you've got the luxury rooms. That's where we're going to have um, more detail and just more room. And as soon as I got the layout kind of figured out, I took a small break to go to the original spot I started this world in to get some things. I wanted to get the armor that I originally used just for traveling around, and I wanted to use it as a decoration in the inn. <laughs> this is all part of the stuff that I did before I decided, hey, I want to make a series on YouTube for this and never upload. So this is some exclusive behind the scenes look at my starter things. Anyway, there's this cool trick where if you push a fence into a armor stand, it gives it arms kind of like how it is in Bedrock Edition, which kind of looks nice. Going back upstairs, uh, every one of the small rooms pretty much had the same situation. It had like a bunk bed, two beds, uh, some storage, and like a plant or something. Uh, the bigger rooms are where it got interesting because I had more room to work with to add some fun designs to each of them. I'm not going to bore you with me building every single room. It's kind of the same repetitive process and I'll show you a deep dive on what they look like at the end. But anyway. Let's get moving on to decorating the hallway. I added these acacia trap doors as like a nice detail, but I don't know. I think it looks nice. And the rest of the hallway is pretty much the same thing. Adding a bunch of foliage, a bunch of desks, and just overall detail. Which I think it turned out pretty okay. This is probably one of my favorite areas of the build. It just feels very... Real, I guess, just with all the rooms and hallway being full of stuff. I don't know. I think it's kind of nice. I saved the last room in the hallway as some sort of like storage room, but it has a hidden function. 
uh, there's a minecart you can go into that will get you above all the rooms. Which, I want to do a little project above all the rooms. That's for a later video. Finally, let's move back downstairs to that uh, dining area I was talking about earlier. The floor is made out of alternating dark oak, and then I added some jungle stairs upside down as little tables. I put a little kitchen area at the back with a chimney and some food hanging on some racks, and then decorated every table with some pots and some food on there. Last little step was to just do some extra decorations to the walls and to the ceiling, and we were done. With the interior done, the exterior of both this building and the sugarcane leather bookmaking factory were looking horrible. <laughs> so I thought it'd only be right to work on some, some foliage of exteriors to make this look nice. First thing I had to do was get some roads in, because I don't know. It makes sense, I guess, if we're building a village. And uh, the best part about building over old terrain is I get free dirt by just digging the stuff that's underneath. But anyway, I don't really know how the layout's supposed to go quite yet. So put in like a rough guess and then started working on the garden area for the inn. First I had to clear out the monster of chests I had in there. And then grabbing some leaves, I made a little ring around the garden. And in order to make it a garden, I thought it would be important to add some uh, plants inside the garden. So I decided to go with some azure, blue, blue, blue and some white tulips. And uh, this has got to be like one of my favorite parts of the build. It's just so cozy. Now we're moving on into like the main terraforming project I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to create uh, some sort of hill something in between the starter house and all the other builds I had because it was looking pretty bland. So after gathering up some resources, I went and did that. To start, I made a little retaining wall that would keep this upper section of terrain away from the path. And then over near the starter side of the base, I wanted to add a little wheat field because, you know, and it'll give like a gradual contrast between each side. Like one side has the whole barrier and the other side has a gradual incline going up to the terrain above it. After mostly making the terrain uh, without any detail work, I got back to the pathway towards the sugarcane farm and then I want to take a break from this section. I wanted to continue this retaining wall idea to the front of the inn to kind of make that feel a little more complete because it was looking a little out of place. So I built a whole retaining wall bit, which I think looks kind of nice. And then I went ahead and got some resources to make a custom tree which will be our first custom tree of this world, and definitely not the last, because I have <laughs> big plans to make like thousands. Now with the tree done, this area is looking a little lackluster, so I want to make it look beautiful. And that would be done by creating a little uh, barrier out of leaves and then adding some blue flowers to make it a little garden area again. Small issue, when I got back there was a friend waiting for me. Bruh, how to kill the better guy. In hindsight, this series of events could have been avoided very easily. I just thought a little bit longer. I decided, because this is what I always do, I just burned the banner guy, and um, didn't even think of uh, any repercussions. I think at this point, you kind of notice the issue. Uh, I 
after spending some time rebuilding, I was putting the finishing touches on the front lawn area of the inn. However, the back side, that's not going to be done for another episode or two, probably. And just like that, this little side project was done and we can get back to the main terraforming project. Real quickly though, I just wanted to uh, make a little pathway in front of the village inn in order to just kind of make that area feel a little more complete, finally. Because as of right now, it was just a bunch of builds that didn't feel very well connected. And so this whole episode is just connecting them up, if you couldn't tell already. So next, I wanted to head over to the sugarcane farm to build a little pathway to go up to it. Because the train was raised up a little bit, and I just thought it would make sense. This area isn't quite done, but it's a start. Next, I wanted to make a little garden section on the train we just made to fill it out, because I don't know what to put there. It, kind of, it could have been cool to put like a house, maybe? Actually, that would have been really cool. Anyway, I made a little garden bit. And for the centerpiece of this little garden area, I want to add a giant oak tree. Now, this is going to be a big tree, and looking at my supplies, I did not have the resources. So very quickly, I went ahead to go get some more oak wood and some leaves. This should hopefully, hopefully, should hopefully be enough and uh, I won't have to get more later, right? section. I opted to do sweet berry bushes because it's... I don't know. I'll do many other of all the farm type stuff later, but for now, we do berry bushes. That's nice. This is probably, I know I keep saying this, but this is probably one of my favorite sections we've built so far in the hardcore world. But it's time to get serious. We've been doing some basic terraforming so far, and now it is, it is time for us to do some more and better and bigger terraforming. While we're gathering resources, um, I have a quick message. Um, subscribe, baby. And if you comment on this video, I will add your name to this little, little book in the hardcore world. I know, pretty exciting. And so if I ever do like world tours or stuff, you're just, you're a part of it, you know? Anyway, I'm sorry for doing that. I hate doing that. Let's go to the video. Back to it. Back to the- Just like any project I do, we have to spend some time gathering resources. Because I wanted to make a little like cliff rock face. I was going to need a lot of uh, stone. And normally mining stone is pretty boring, so I came up with a, a strategy, if you will, to make it a little less, or a little more interesting. So I dig all these little like rooms and tunnels and stuff. It doesn't really matter where it goes, but like after a while, you have a pretty big expanse of like tunnels. 
I got pretty much all the stone I was gonna need, and it was a lot of stone. This chest looks crazy, I know, but most of it is just stone, so just, you know. So, I was all ready to do some terraforming, but there was an issue, a huge issue, that I had to just confront. So I've been, uh, doing some thinking. First of all, how did the minecart come off the rail? In order to fix the, uh, the lag situation, I've got to get rid of at least one of the cow crushers. The lag I had at that point was really bad, and my computer at the time was pretty bad. I've since upgraded, so eventually we'll come back and put these in probably next episode. But anyway, I have something to show you. I made a little sheep farm. Basically, as an extra detail block, I now have uh, light gray wool as like a stone and dark green wool as like a, a grass. Anyway, finally, let's terraform. So there is the first half of the little cliff face. I think that looks really good. We've gotten some progress done. Um, over on this cliff face I wanted to do. So we got big tree in. Uh, there's a couple things I want to change about it, but for the most part, it's pretty cool. Then if we go over here, we've got the start of the cliff face, which I think looks pretty all right. Um, just got mixed farm over here uh cart over here and uh yeah it's looking pretty all right but um come up to the top it's uh it's not quite done yet if i'm being totally honest <laughs> and also i haven't uh detailed anything past here on the rest out uh, on the rest of the cliff face but i think it'll look cool yeah so I think the next part of this project is to detail this all out. Once again, it's raining. I don't know what's happening. I've got a rainy world. Um, but anyway, this side, this side's basically done. Um, I might add a little more uh, dirt over here just to balance it out. Let's go look at it from over here. Yeah, that looks that looks nice. That looks really nice. Yeah, there's still a couple more things I'm gonna add. Like I gotta put some roots over here. 
and then probably add more dirt just in this section. It feels a little lacking. But that looks nice. That looks good. The only problem is <laughs> my inventory. Oh, I also gotta add leaves. My inventory's a mess. Um, I've got random storage here and now over here. And then all of these chests are really just thrown around. So maybe I'll spend some time organizing. The problem is, is that um, we're also... I don't know what's going to happen because it's already been eight months since the last video, but uh, the interior's got to get done. What happened? What happened? And then, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but I like to think because um, the sweet berries, they're in taiga biomes, and this is not a taiga, so it's like, it's like a, a rare commodity over here kind of thing. And so they've got a communal, like, village-wide berry farm here. That's just kind of everybody can grab and tend to, which is fun. So taking a small break from all the terraforming, I wanted to go find the blue warped forest biome. Just having that wood type would be very nice, but I really like the mushroom plant and also like the little, like, grass something. I thought this was going to be a quick trip, um, two hours later, I, I still couldn't find it, and I actually found another nether fortress, which is stupid, but finally, after a long time of searching, this happened. Then it was a long and horrible journey back. I absolutely hate the nether, but we made it. Did I just spend two hours getting a plant? Yeah. And so finally, we can fix the Shurikane Book Factory front, because oh my gosh, it looks bad. Adding the screen here was a was a nice touch. I mean, it looks so nice. Really adds to this whole road area. And this is usually when I end my really long videos because I don't know anything more than 30 minutes is kind of pushing it. But like I said, we're gonna get all the footage, baby. So see how long this is. So I was originally wanting to detail this all out, but there's all these chests over here and I can't really move them because I don't have a storage room. Um, my storage system over here is its just a mess. So I think it's finally time to get the starter house done on day uh, 433. Yikes, okay. But uh, if we go inside here, it's looking... It's looking bad. There's like holes in the roof and there's spiders. Yeah, I know this sounds crazy, but uh, 500 days into this world, we're actually going to finish the starter base. <laughs> to be fair though, it's a pretty it's a pretty intense starter base. So, but I've got a sick interior designed. Not really good at those, but I'm pretty proud of this one. 
for that we're gonna need to get a lot of different resources a lot of odd resources as this was gonna be my like storage system as well I need a lot of wood to make chests but also need a lot of sandstone for the design and one of the weirder resources was I needed a lot a lot of clay because I needed it for bricks I needed to smelt the clay blocks into terracotta and I also just needed straight clay blocks Another weird one was I wanted to get the beehive block. Yeah, the beehive block, because it looks nice. And I was gonna have it as like a little border thing around all the chests. So throughout all this, I was trying to set up multiple bee setups. I don't really know how they work, if I'm being honest. Right here you can kind of get an example of what I want part of the walls to look like. I'd use the light gray terracotta and the clay block. That looks cool, in my opinion. But this is the upgraded bee setup. I just added a bunch more beehives and then I started a tree farming area in the back of the house so I can get all the wood types I'm going to need. And with those couple hours of gathering resources, I had a good amount of resources to where I could start on the starter base interior, just get a good way through, and then I can start on the next bit in a bit. To start, I think it would be a good idea to get rid of the vines that have been growing in front of the door. Add a kind of a cool, like, Oh, it's been here for a while. I haven't really worked on this in a while, but now it's just annoying. It wasn't intentional or anything, but it's just how it happened. Next, we need to get in a floor. I kind of went with just a basic spruce floor. Um, it was hard to do anything with too much depth because of the spider spawner and how that worked is right below it. But I think it'll work, and if I want to change my mind, I can. So. One of the benefits of having a spider spawner below my starter base is as, as long as I'm like building there, it's loaded and I can get XP every like 5 minutes or so. Um, my whole genius idea to get rid of all the cows so I couldn't make bookshelves anymore. I'm out of bookshelves for this build, so we're gonna go find a, um, a stronghold in order to get the rest of the books I need for this build. By no means are we gonna be beating the game today. Um, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm enjoying not beating the game and not having an elytra, so I won't do it. Alright, I guess we throw the first eye. 
Okay, I guess the first two eyes. And neither of them broke. Okay, let's go this way. And I only think it would be smart to take our, our new horse. And I think this armor is very ugly now. And off we went to go try to find the stronghold. It wasn't too far away from what I remember. Um, just a bit ways. I'm gonna go grab a bow. Oh shoot! I'm gonna triangulate this. My epic speedrunner knowledge. I'm guessing it's about here. So, after throwing a couple more eyes, I figured out it's probably somewhere in this cave. And that shouldn't be a problem, right? I can't see anything. Torches! What is this place? It's probably not important. Crap. Crap. Yo! Nice. Oh. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, Paisano! Yippee! Uh, one eye. Um, how do you not get lost? Um, you use your, your brain. Wow.
my. From where? Here? Okay. That will be in here. Almost done. You know what? first half of the Starbase interior basically finished, I had one small detail I wanted to add. And for that I was going to need a bunch of leather, yet again. I don't know how I keep doing this. Long story short, I needed to create a bunch of leather armor for a little detail bit, and I did not have nearly enough, so off we go to get some more leather. So cool. Have a seat. Pan Oh no. Here, rain is gone. Stop. Stop. Where are you going? That's kind of cool, actually. Oh, it's going to be close, actually. One. Come on, dog. It's time. Come on. Hello? <sighs> Come on. think now. So, after making a whole bunch more dyes, we can finally add this detail I wanted to add. It's gotta be one of my favorite things I've ever done in this game. And there's no like, oh really God, good God. explanation why. It's just, it's just kinda nice. So all I kinda need to add was the chest and then this little detail bit, which you can kinda see um, right over here. So let's dye up the armor and uh, yeah. Let's let's just get this over with. I'm tired of this project. Okay. This looks so cool. Anyway, let's tear down all the scaffolding. Um, you can barely notice them. 
I think it's so cool. I have a storage room. Alright, so the play is to organize this in the morning because I am tired and I want to watch Game of Thrones. The next day would begin with me sorting out the monster of chests into my new storage room. So, I've got ev just about everything sorted. Um, kinda. So as you walk in, we go over here, we've got all of the, uh, various stones and then over here we got all the wood types and look how it's just like junk there was moving on over here we've got all our ores and valuables here is empty for now i'm sure i'll find something to fill it with then over here is all the greenery stuff so we've got dyes and flowers dirts got food and then the uh, colored box if we come over here most of these are empty but we've got nether stuff mob drops and look how much look how many like perfectly good shears there are all the chests are basically gone haven't gotten rid of the furnaces though because uh, where I have the furnace set up or where I want to have it set up is over here in the area we haven't quite finished yet. If we look, we're at day 494, which is a little ridiculous because I haven't done anything. And just kind of as the as I was building this up and everything, I've come down this way. You might be able to hear it. I turned them down because it was really annoying. But there are so many spiders. I've gotten so much XP from this. And then a while ago, and I'm talking months ago, I made a little bit of diamond armor. And I was just going to enchant it as I went. And I never did that, mainly because I needed tools. But now I've got the XP levels to do it. Being on day 500, almost, in a hardcore world, and not even having diamond armor, I think it's funny. But I also don't want to lose my world. It's pretty bad, but it, it, it works good. I can try this out. Once again, pretty meh workable. And I don't think I want fire protection. So yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do because all I need is protection and I'm breaking for the most part. There also is like blast protection, which honestly probably pretty good for the, like the boots just in case there is the creeper mishap but now that we've got more of a storage system set up i can start <laughs> actually doing projects that i want to do without having chests absolutely everywhere i used to have chests all lined up right here now they're gone which means i can now detail this section out and not make it look like garbage
cool. Just like that, we had this area finally finished. It's been too long and it's looked like crap for too long. But finally, it's at a place where I can call it done. I've done so many work, so many. Let's take a look. First off, I got this uh, tree built in. So when you're kind of down over here and you look at like kind of obstructs your sight line from what's behind it, I don't know. And then moving forward, I got this all trained out. I did a couple of like big rocks with like grassy areas coming down. But then um, when you come up here, I wanted this little pond to feel secluded from the path. So I added some bushes, which looks kind of nice. Um, this pond thing, uh, yeah, pretty basic, looks good. These are the ugliest looking plants, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, yeah. Just kind of also uh, started the path over this way, and this build finally feels way more incorporated into the into the land. So I got this tree done. I wanted this one to have like a bit of a thicker trunk. Uh, looks nice. Got two smaller trees right here to uh, guide you down this pathway, and uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So for the final project we're gonna do today, let's finish the other half of the starter base interior.
and we're done. Okay, so this did not take nearly as long as I thought it was going to be because I've kind of farmed all the resources already. I have a lot of extra of this and, and this stuff. The only stuff I had to really get was some more brown mushrooms and some uh, sea kelp. But here we are. This is the lounge. So let's go back. We got the storage room right here. Ignore this chest. This is junk. Um, you come up here and we've got a little shrine or whatever. I'm going to replace this back block with a lodestone eventually. For now, it's fine. This is where I'm going to put elytra because I don't, well, I'll use it, but I don't know how often I'd use it. We'll see. Anyway. Um, oh, I feel like, actually, I think I'm missing a couple paintings. Hold on. I can put a painting. Whoa. Whoa. Two by two here. That's lovely. Okay. Whoa, it's like, like I was saying. Um, go over here, you got a little plant ender chest, which I have yet to use. Come over here, and we've got the room. My room. Anyways, so yeah, we've got our room right here. Over here, ooh, I'm gonna do that right now, actually. Yeah, still working on this armor. I don't think I've enchanted, like, anything since working on the actual storage room. But we can at least put it right here for now. I'm still rocking my iron armor. Uh, we've got like a little statue guy right here, um, looks kind of cool, little desk with a candle, I don't know, I saw this banner, I thought it looked cool, so it's there. One of, one of my favorite parts about this is the loom, like bottom textures used over here and here, that looks sweet. We've got like a nice blue roof, uh, bed over here. I gotta go grab snow from the mountain to make this, and then a little dog bed right here. But we're not done. We've got an entire basement to do, and I've got big plants. So when I was designing this basement, I went through like two or three different designs because it was kind of an awkward shape, and I just I just didn't know what I wanted. But after like try number three, I kind of came up with a design I really liked. Uh, it involves a lot of tall ceilings and big archways to make it seem like there's more space. And then also just adding functionality to get to the spider farm as well as like a smeltering setup really helps. This is probably the best red zone I've ever done. And with that, the basement. Oh, let me clear my inventory. Everything's a mess. I'm not gonna lie, everything is a mess right now. Storage system, straight to the pooper. That's where it's gone. Right here, I put a little shrine. We'll see why in a little bit, but doesn't it look nice? Very cute. Um, but yeah, let's go through these doors. And uh, here we are. 
It's very gray, but I like it a lot. So yeah, we can kind of connect this entrance up over here to this balcony. We've got this stairway that goes down. Uh, and yeah, over here I've got excess spider killing stuff because when we go down, there's so many all the time because I'm just working here all the time. I'm almost at 50 levels. Oh, congratulations! So yeah, there's just a ton of drops. I've got to move the rest of these because the system is a little clogged, especially this one. Yeah, coming back up here, uh, it is nighttime. We've got, I made a little entrance over here for the next thing we're gonna do. We'll get into that in just a second. But continuing our tour, got these really nice like arches and then we can come over here to this blue area and this is where we've got our smelting stations. This is just like a really quick two furnace uh, smelter thing, really easy. And then this is the same thing with blast furnaces. Nothing too complicated. But yeah, so the shrine is on the other side of this wall, and the only way to hide it was to build something out of it, which I think was pretty genius, if you ask me. And uh, going around the long way, oh my goodness, see I'm already annoyed. Going around the long way to uh, get inside is a little bit of a pain. So, I've got this very secret entrance over here. It takes you down here, this is behind the uh, smelting setups. And, uh, oh, this is all the chest of junk that I need to sort again on the storage system. But if you go over here with my expert <laughs> redstone expertise, um, you hit this button, and you're right here. And you can hit this button to go back as well. Pretty cool, huh? So we can just place a trapdoor here. There we go. I still want to decorate, like, I'm going to put, like, a table right here. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. Put some other stuff on there. Anyway, but the next part of the project is going to be going down here. Um, I've already got kind of the idea I want to go for. Uh, and it includes this little door doorway right here. Uh, I want to have my, my personal underground horse stables just down here where I can do all the breeding and things to make the perfect horse because I think using an elytra is kind of lame I'll say that until I get one then I'll immediately use it but that's kind of the idea is we're gonna have two pathways one leading down this way one leading this way this way we'll have all the stables this way we'll have all the like testing areas and breeding areas so we can create the best horse possible Let's get to work.
uh, coming over to the right side of the pathway, first of all, we got this whole uh, left side done. With a whole bunch of stables, I can extend this if I need to, but I think this will do for now. And then I connected it up over here with our um, spider spawner. And once I get some more redstone, I'll add like a on and off switch and like a auto switch, you know? Just kind of, just kind of made things look a little bit nicer down here. I don't love it, but it's, it's better for sure. And then, uh oh, uh oh. So the second half of the horse dungeon uh, is going to be used to test the horses. Over here, we're going to have the system test their speed. Over here, we're going to have a system to test their jumping ability. So let's get on with that. So let's just take uh, this horse, for example. So we can kind of head down here. This area will be cleaned up, hopefully. Um, but yeah, over here we've got the patented stick method uh, for calculating horse speed. Very precise and very good. I don't really know how much this works. This is T whatever, whatever, and then hopper clock. And depending on how many sticks output here, we know our speed. Then over here, we've got the jump test. Now, I know for a fact that it probably can't even get to four and a half, but it just adds some symmetry, which is nice, I guess. So let's test out this horse. So, we go from there to there. Okay. That seemed pretty quick. What are we looking at? No, I think something's wrong with my hands. <laughs> All right, let's test it out again. Um, ugh, okay. And go. Okay, seems like it worked. Six? Really? This one's a lot slower than I expected. So, the lower the stick count, the faster it is, obviously. What we got? Six. That is slow. So it's a three jump horse. And so what we do now, is we bring it over to the stable section. I'm thinking, you can go right in here. Okay. So, place it like this, yeah. So this is a six stick and a three snow horse. Uh, not terrible, but also like definitely not the best. And uh, I've got two more horses out here. This one is quick. This one is just my favorite color scheme. This horse is bad, very bad. However, I do like the colors on it. So this is a six stick and a 1.5 snow. This has basically taught me that I've got a whole bunch of sucky horses. Okay, now before I get too far into horse breeding, um, which I probably will do, <sighs> I think this has got to be de decorated because it looks so awful right now. And so here we are for the last building project of this hour-long episode. Yikes. Um, if you sat through this, uh, aches. You know, I know it, I know it sucks. The next one will be better. But, I don't know. Enough. Silence!
All right, just the last finishing couple details. I wanted to ooh, uh, fix this section. And then I also need to reconnect the wires. I disconnected them. Is it on? Anyway, I am done. I finished decorating for the most part. Maybe I'll come back and just clean this area up, but I don't really care. This has kind of been a pain to decorate. Sweet. That is all working and good. So I came down here, added those blue areas here. Completely out of prismarine and prismarine bricks though. And also uh, copper. We'll have to get that next episode. And then over here, I just added little uh, little window bits for, for like little alcove. I don't know. I think it looks fine. Um, this was just mainly to, um, cause I'm not going to be down here too, too often. It's just gotta not look completely repulsive, but yeah. And then over here, oh, and the ceilings, we've got looms, which nice detail, I guess. Over here, we've got a staircase going up. We are now underneath the little, let's see, right here is the little sweet berry farm, which kind of gives perspective where we're at. Um, when we come down here, uh, we can kind of say, all right, which horse is the best? I like this one's color, and it's honestly, like, out of the horses we've got, it's not terrible. And then this would be our next best horse. So let's grab these two. I'm going to go like that. Ah, oh, whoa, that looks so pretty. That is a nice-looking horse. Okay, you got to go. You gotta get back in. So this is, I guess, the mom, because the baby is chosen. And so let's stick them back in their in their respective areas. Can't separate the mom from the baby, of course, not until it's grown. All right. Maybe give him a couple, because these are kind of expensive. <laughs> so we'll let him grow up. Um, I'll get ready for work while he's doing this. And not die. Hopefully. I guess while that is growing up, we can enchant a piece of armor and get absolute crap again. <sighs> you know what? Bad day. Good day. Saddle. Poor. That felt quick. Maybe it's just broken. So, I've later found out, um, like five months after building it, that the B-dubs redstone method for figuring out the speed of horses isn't entirely accurate. I'll fix it sometime. So, with the starter house done, I thought it'd only be right to give our day one companions a home. With that, we can finally get rid of all this junk. That was my starter hut. I, I'm i gonna be honest, I don't remember what I named him. It. It's been that long. It's, hold on, I gotta watch that my video again. Wallace. <laughs> Why did I name it like for the latest dude name? It's the Wallace and Douglas, huh? Understood. Mm -hmm. Wallace. Douglas. Douglas is actually a girl. Uh, new lore alert. Douglas is a girl. Alright, buddy. You are Douglas, the girl. jump. Classic Douglas is what we call him. what he's doing right now. We call that a classic Douglas. Douglas is actually a wanted criminal, so we must keep him behind bars. For our day one, kinda, this is Wallace. I thought it'd only be right to put Wallace in his dog bed right next to mine because he's my rock man. I just don't know what. 
Okay, I may have lied. Um, I have one more tiny little project I wanted to do. Technically two. Real quickly, I just wanted to make a little flower farm um, just next to the starter base. I thought it might look nice. This whole video thing, this whole hour long, you know, the whole past three videos have been a pain to edit. Like, it's just so much footage, it'd be like, alright, wake up, do some editing, go to work, get home, do some more editing, and it sucked. So, I'm not going to do that anymore, I'm going to just have normal sized videos. So. If you didn't remember, I have that big centerpiece table inside of my storage room, and some of you might have been wondering what I was going to do with it. Uh, the plan was to make a little map of my surrounding area. So yeah, if you've made it through this hour-long video, um, even if you haven't, thanks for, thanks for giving it a try. Um, I'm not doing this again, I'm just going to have like 20 minutes, Ooh. whatever's. Ah, oh, that's so fun. That's so sweet. Way to add to the lag as well. It's, it's a great idea. So, on the morning of day 601, we are officially all caught up and done with this video. I'm so done with this. I don't know if I'm going to do some special outro for this, but uh, 